And next up we have John uh, first of all, mark my word, Patrick's the first one that we're going to see in MoMA because I think that that is a, um, a collaborative kind of, that, that's the kind of cutting edge thing that, that, that we're looking, not we're looking toward, that, that I think the modern art world has not yet seen from the, maybe it has, but I just don't know, but I think that's, so look for it. Okay. On that note, um, I've been organizing this conference and I'm woefully unprepared, so let me start with that disclaimer if you'll be the first yeah. slide. Um, representational art is twice removed from that which att it attempts to portray. This is my platonic speech. Okay. Next. Digital art is seemingly one step removed from that. Next. Or is it? <laughs> all right. And with all apologies to Jose Andres, we've been doing this uh, simultaneously. And this and this is great, okay. No, this is Juan Pereira by Velasquez, and um, I, is the, the, the portrait I've stood in front of and just gazed in awe most. And uh, it, it's, it's something that I don't even know if I like traditional portraiture, but there's something about this gaze back at you, which, um, which is just is a phenomenal thing to me that Velasquez had. He's my, he's my favorite artist. Um, and again, I like a variety of artists, from Marcel Duchamp to um, um, Fabric Lenny. <laughs> um, but uh, Velasquez's uh, portrait of Juan Pareja is my is my favorite piece. Um, go, sorry. Um, naturally, I should be presenting this if we're talking about digital to traditional translations, because that's what I've been attempting to do with my Fayum portrait series, when it, which is to take the piece and then transfer them onto gel medium, rub away the gel medium, and then place them onto weathered wood. Um, but I'm going to talk about that today at 2 o'clock, if you're able to attend that. I know I'm up against you know my peers, which is a little uncomfortable, but um, because they're they're high, highly superior. Um, and, and I am going to... Uh, um, to talk about this series, but if you go on. So this is really what juiced me about the uh, iPhone. Like, uh, uh, th this is a, uh, these are the volume portraits which I try to, do to create in delicious simulacrum, if that's the word, um, and um, painting people I knew that sort of resembled, I thought, these characters from antiquity, and that soon expanded. Next. Uh, this, in the case, is my wife, Suzanne, here on the left, and this is Leah. She's actually an artist uh, from uh, Connecticut, Leah Jew is her name. But my, my whole thing was I wanted, I, portraiture is fine, yeah, but I don't think I'm a great portraitist. You know, this is photographically derived. Uh, it's all hand-drawn. There is not a photograph anywhere in this, but it is photographically derived. You know, I don't think that I'm the greatest classical painter, and there are like 9,000 people that do it better than I. But what I thought about this is what can I bring to this medium? What can I bring? And my response to it was let's try to introduce a faux surface to it and not do it gratuitously, right? Not, let's not introduce some gratuitous faux surface and think that, that I'm doing something that's original. Let's see what I can do organically with this and see how it responds. And the layers and layers and layers that I'm allowed to achieve in digital art lets me subtract and add, and it's pretty incredible. Uh, these are done in brushes. Um, and, and what I responded to out of that is, well, I want to make real pieces from these pieces. I will be talking about this at 2 o'clock. And so um, I started to do these gel transfers on layers and layers and layers of gel medium, and then take that and peel the gel medium off of a piece of glass, and then start to affix them to old barn wood. And then I put the old barn wood, I put the piece on the old barn wood, and I pour this two-part resin on top of it, catalyzes, you know, and gets all glossy, go bar top in it. And, um, and then with, um, what's it called, um, uh, beeswax, and um, gold leaf on top of that. And these are, yeah, I'm a college professor. Some of these are students. You know, I try to wait till they're, uh, I'm done with the class and I've given them a grade before I go doing their portrait. I, there's just something, 
Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, there's something like, I don't know, I can't paint a portrait of a student while that person is still my student. But, you know, this is fellow artists, students, colleagues, friends, family, anyone who will pose for me. Uh, but I like to try to keep it real, dude. I like to try to keep it pure by using just an iPhone painting, I mean an iPhone photo, to, to use as my source material. Next. Um, but now I back up, but now I digress, as we like to say. What this emerged from was the fact that I was doing traditional portraiture uh, in oils. And to tell you the truth, I have not touched oil paint in six months, and that might just be a problem because I'm an oil painting professor. <laughs> <laughs> sort of a black sheep slash apostate in my own department. <laughs> I don't know what to do with me, and I don't quite know what to do with myself, and I'm pretty darn pleased that I don't have to smell the solvents. <laughs> uh, but that said, I'm still like pushing this portfolio. I come from I come from a, you know a traditional artistic pedigree. I have an MFA, and you know MFA means what? Come on, somebody. <laughs> no. I'm a master. <laughs> um, but, but so these are the oil paintings, and this is where I started when I first picked up an iPhone and said, wow, you know, and like most of us did. And this is a series called the Genus Series. And these are derived, these are derived from photography also because, you know, I do sketch at the zoo. I sketch at the zoo and I do plein air sketching, and I, and I love to do plein air sketching. I've done quite a bit of it and I'm sitting there with my iPhone and you know, you've got the monkeys out there and the monkeys back behind me watching, you know, and it's hard to see which is which. Um, but I, I'm just so, back to the Velazquez portrait, yes. <laughs> I'm so engaged with the gaze. I like this thing of this thing. And you look into the eyes of a, of a gorilla and, uh, okay, and you don't know if it's looking back at you with consciousness or not. Next. And this is my father-in-law, so, you know, <laughs> just in case I can go back. Oh, you know, and you know what? What's interesting, okay, so what's interesting about these, the, these pieces is that the, the people will willingly port, uh, pose for me with their shirt off. Yeah, you know, not the women, usually not, you know, woo, but, you know, at least put a shirt down and, and have bare shoulders. Um, because I, I think that there's this is this is my daughter, this is my stepson, this is a, you know artist friends, this is me. But I, but I want this connection between the human ape and the ape ape, and vice versa, the primate and the human, and the human and the primate. Next, and here's an install. Here's a size comparison. I like it to be a wall. I like it to be a wall o apes, including all of us. You know, so, this is my stepson Gabriel, and this is a given. All right. Um, and the people, people generally like it. But anyway, let me, let me. I'm, I'm going quickly. Um, uh, back to the Velasquez. Everything goes back to Velasquez for me. So this is called Mandrill after Velasquez. Well, this isn't Velasquez. This is a portrait. That's a Rembrandt portrait. But you know, this this thing of this this flurry. What's it called? Fluffy collar. I I, I saw a connection. Next. Same here with the baboon. This is Hamadrian, but baboon. Um, I, I, these look classical to me, and I wanted to present them in a classical way, like I would a, 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 a traditional uh, painting. Go. Okay, I got two more. Sorry. Sorry. And then, of course, here's now the translation into the iPhone and iPad work. And you can see, once again, I want the gaze. I want the, I want the creatures. I want the people. I want the subject to gaze back to you. And some of these are just the volume portraits that, you know, you're, you're able to do, like, hundreds of iterations with your iPhone and your iPad. And so some of these are, are people right here. This is Kara up in the upper left. And uh, Sal Navarro, I thought he was going to be here. Um, and Mia. And, and so ultimately, I would like to get this up into the hundreds or even the thousands, you know, because I, I, I just I like to work like that in, in multiples. Next. And then here is the ultimate. I leave you with this slide. This was done on Art Rage. It's my one piece that I've done on Art Rage. And that begs a new question, which is the whole thing of the concept of an emulator, emulating paint, which the first question one must ask and should ask is why, okay? And so I, 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 I don't know where this is going. I will openly admit, I don't know if I like an emulator. And 
it, will I lose some of the originality of the paint or the originality of the digital processes? So um, that's all I have to say, so thank you very much.